This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. O oh God, our Father, invoke your richest blessings upon this worship service today. We pray that you would meet every need, every desire, and every expectation according to your will and purpose for our lives. Please bless our pastor and every leader and participant in this worship experience today. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Congregational hymn as I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Was alone and I 
Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful us. Be thankful unto him.
name. We come to praise his 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 name. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 40 through 42. Again, that's Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 40 through 42, and it reads, And they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were accounted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Our prayer list this morning consists of Ronald Barnes and the Barnes family and the loss of our own sister, Johnny Pearl Barnes. And let us keep our sick and shut in in our prayers as well as each other. Father God, we come right now realizing that before we can ask you for anything, we just need to say thank you for everything. We thank you, Lord, because we know that it's been only you and you alone and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And Father God, we thank you for your favor. None of which we deserve, but all of which we've been blessed with. And Father God, we pray right now that you will just have your way right now. We pray a special prayer over the Barnes family and the loss of Sister Pearl Barnes. We thank you for the life and the legacy that she led and that she left. And Father God, we pray right now that you will just have your way with that, with that family. Lord God, we pray a special prayer for all of the sick and the shut in and anybody that just stands in the need because we all have a need right now. Whatever that situation may be, whatever that problem may be, whatever the crisis may be, Father God, we pray that you will just have your way and we thank you in advance because we know that it's already done. Oh Lord, we pray right now that you will just bless this world. We live in times of peril and times of, of just of, of, of evil and calamity, but Lord, we know that you're able. And we pray, Father God, that you would just meet every need according to your will and your purpose for our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would just forgive us for our sins, Lord, those known and those unknown, that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And then, Father God, that you would just cover us with a fresh anointing so that we may be able to go out and live the example that you would have us to. Father God, we pray right now that you would just bless this house. Bless us individually and bless us collectively. Father God, we pray a special prayer over the man of God that shepherds this house. Touch his family, O oh Lord. We pray that you would just lift him up, O oh Lord. Bless the preach word as it goes forth, and we pray that you will soften our hearts, that we will be able to receive it and apply it to our daily lives. Lord God, we just say thank you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing right now, and for all that you're going to do. And, oh, Lord, we will be so ever careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
I give myself away. Oh God, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am, here I stand, Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing. Lord, I'm longing to sing your Myself away. I give myself away so you can you here I am here I am here I stand here I stand Lord my life. Lord my life is in your hands Lord I'm longing Lord Sacrifice. Myself away. I give myself away so you can you give myself me. away. I give myself away. Oh God, give myself away. I give myself away so you can you. Second verse again, take me. my heart. Take my heart. Take my life, God. Take my life. As a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Lord, all my dreams. All my dreams. And all my plans. All my plans. Lord, I place them in your hands. Lord, I Away. I give myself away so you can use 
give myself away. I long to be with you, oh God. I give myself away so you can I give myself you. away. I give myself away. Oh God, oh God. I give myself away so you can you give myself away. myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. My life, my life, life is not my own. Yeah. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Say that with me. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. Oh, come on. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. Give myself. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on. Lift your voice and say, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you. Give myself, give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. Give myself. I give myself. I give myself. One more time. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you. I give myself away. Give myself away. I give myself away. So you can you give myself away. Oh God, oh God, give myself away. To you I belong, I give myself, give myself to you. All my plans, all my desires, yes. my life is not my own. Yes. To you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you. Come on, join me, say it again. My life is not my own. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Let's declare today that my life is not my own. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Now right there, give God a worship and give God a praise. Oh, come on now, give yourself to him right there. Give yourself to him right there. 
Open up your mouth and give God your best praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy of all my praise, God. You're worthy of all my praise, Jesus. You're worthy of all my praise, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, God. God, our Father, speak today in the name of Jesus. Let your word go forth. Men, women, boys, and girls might be convinced that our lives are not our own. They belong to you. We give them the best we know how sacrificial way today. Bless. In the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. That 41st verse of the 5th chapter of the Gospel of, of, um, of Acts, I should say, the uh, the Acts of the Apostles. It said, So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. This being uh, Men's Month, and I wanted to um, say a few words and these lessons in a way of um, of um, patterning their lives after those who had given their lives to Christ. God had prepared them for service to let our men know that God is still looking and preparing men for ministry today. Amen. So I've chosen for the next few weeks, um, men count it worthy to suffer for Christ. Men count it worthy to suffer for Christ. I thought I would use uh, the first example in our discussion. Uh, a man who many of you have heard and have condemned and have said, many unkind things about because he was the one that we always highlight that he denied Jesus. I want you to know that no individual living on this planet Earth has lived an exemplary life with the exception of Jesus. We all have made mistakes. And as long as we live on this earth, we are subject to make mistakes. 
So the first 11 chapters in the book of Acts are built around the activities of the apostle Peter. First 11 chapters. I want to use Peter today as our leading and feature character that uh, the men of this church, and not only this church, but in our um, um, uh, churches throughout the nation can pattern their lives after. Men of New Covenant, I want you to observe today how God, through Jesus, could take an ordinary man like Peter, develop and mature him in ministry to do extraordinary things. God could take an ordinary man, just a, a man, a man who had no idea or who had no desire really to be what he became. He was, he was a um, common man who had some um, uh, I and some understanding of the, what this business was all about. He and his brother, along with John, they uh, attended many of the services that were uh, rendered by John the Baptist. They were in the audience and um, um, Peter had a career that he was trying to develop. That was his livelihood. He wanted, he had a livelihood to support his family. And um, uh, so his, his business was more on um, fishing uh, than on uh, the message of Jesus Christ. It was after John, had, John the Baptist had been arrested that his brother Andrew uh, was subject to uh, some of the teachings and conversations of Jesus that he went and found his brother Peter and brought him back and said, we have found the Messiah. Uh, it was it was Peter who was uh, delighted to have met Jesus and to understand his knowledge and perception of life. And but he went on back to his profession, that was a uh, fishing for fish. That was his job, that was his livelihood. But one day Jesus came by and said to um, uh, Peter, um, uh, follow me. I, 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 know, I know this is your job, I know this is your profession, but follow me. And I will, I will, I will develop you uh, and help you to become fishers of men. Uh, and that's all. That's all. Um, um, uh, Bruce and the choir were saying today that that um, uh, Peter had to understand that his life was not his own. Um, he had to give his life as it was away in order for him to gain what he gained in life. So we must understand that, that this life 
um, that we now live, unless we live it in Christ, uh, it's a life undeserving of what God has in store for us. And I want you to know that God is still looking for ordinary men today. Uh, who are willing to surrender their lives and, and, um, and give themselves totally in following him. And if, if you're willing to follow Jesus, he can equip you to do some extraordinary things. Jesus won't. Jesus want, want men who will take their proper stand and fulfill their role and responsibilities as leaders in their homes and in their churches. It is, it is, it is the it is the man's responsibility uh, to be in a position to answer any questions that his uh, family, his children might ask. And I'm sure, I'm sure that, that there, are, there, are, there are questions that young people have today that if they would go and ask their fathers, um, what does this scripture mean? They would probably say, go and ask your mother. But men, it's your responsibility to be in a position to answer any questions that your sons or daughters or your nieces and nephews may have regarding the word of God. Take that stand. And when Jesus, when Jesus was on trial preceding his crucifixion, Peter denied him. I mentioned that when I first opened. But now after being filled with the Holy Spirit, he is rejoicing that he is counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. You, you, can't, you can't do this unless you have been fixed by him. You've been equipped by him. You've been matured by him. You see, suffering is agony. Su suffering is affliction. Su suffering is distress. Su suffering is intense pain. Su suffering is sorrow. Suffering is, um, is, is, is grief. The Bible makes clear that some suffering is a result of evil and sinful actions in the world, we we going to encounter um, certain reaction because uh, uh, sin and evil always present. Paul said it. Paul said it well when he said, "When I would do good, evil is always present." wake up in the morning and with good intentions on your mind and, and before you can get your day started, something come across to disturb you. Something upset you and something caused you to get your mind off of the joy that you had when you started the day. And, um, uh, and I want you to know that, that one third, one, one third, and that's why uh, pastors encourage their members to read the book of Psalms because one third of the book of Psalms gives graphic descriptions of suffering 
and, um, uh, and, and, and it gives us some understanding how to deal with the um, sufferings that are going on in our lives. I just mentioned a few, I mentioned agony, infliction, uh, but as we go through these situations, um, you will find some comfort in the Word of God. In the Bible, in, in your Bible reading time, I would ask you to look again at the 22nd uh, Psalms. Um, uh, read it carefully. Uh, it gave you some consolation. And if you are suffering through some situations uh, directly or indirectly now, uh, uh, the 22nd Psalm will give you some enlightenment and comfort the theme of the book of Job is uh, the problem of, deal with the problem of suffering and why God permit the righteous to suffer. In, in, the, in the book of Hebrews 5, 8 declares that Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. Um, uh, he was obedient to his father. His father carried him through certain situations, but, but he didn't go part the way. And it doesn't help us. When, when God gives us an assignment, it might be pi painful, might be uh, distressful, but always remember that whatever we go through, and whatever he assigned for us to go through or deal with, that he's going through with us. Hebrew 2.10 says, uh, he perfected, uh, he was perfected through suffering. Finish his assignment. 2 Corinthians 12.7 says, suffering has a potential of demonstrating God's power. If you want to know whether God can handle your situation or not, just hang in there. Don't, 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 don't give up. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Just hold on a while longer. He will see you through. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 6 says, those who suffer or in a position to comfort others. When you've gone through what you go through, and that's why I can't understand how uh, many of our children uh, seemingly know more than their parents. They would be better off if they were listening to what the parents is trying to teach them because they have gone through it already. They wouldn't make so many mistakes if they would listen to someone who has gone through what they are going through. But, 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 but for somehow, uh, but, but, but some, some way in their minds, they have already uh, uh, decided that they know enough that they don't have to hear and they don't have to comprehend and they don't have to work with their parents. But, but, but those who have gone through can help those from going through the same mistakes, the same suffering, the same pain as they have gone through. After, after uh, the Ananias and Safari experience, uh, people believed in the teaching and preaching of Jesus by Peter. And many were saved and many were healed. Peter, Peter um, was able to lay hands on the sick and he was able to bring a relief of pain and, and suffering from a number of the people who were associated with the ministry of, of, of the temple. And, and there were those who were not even part of, but they were convinced that Peter had 
a relationship with Jesus that could bring them comfort, that could bring them relief, that could bring them healing. And when you read the story, it, it, it says that many of them couldn't get to Peter, but they felt if they could get where uh, his shadow would cover them, as he walked down the street or the road, then they would be healed. And many, many, many brought their kinfolk, many brought their families, and put them in the way where Peter was traveling. And if, if, if they could just get underneath his shadow, they believed he would be, they would be healed. And I want you to know today that God is still in the healing business. Uh, God, God, God is passing through and there, there are those that he has equipped and those that he has prepared and those that he has given the ministry. And that's why, that's why many of us feel that, um, uh, well, you know, I can, I can do it myself. Well, sometimes, uh, nobody said you can't do it yourself. But sometimes it's just good to be in the presence of those whom God has touched. <laughs> Lay the hand on you. And, 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 and this is what got Peter in trouble. So many people were being healed and delivered by his ministry that, 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 that the Pharisees and the priests Got, 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 got sort of uh, um, uh, indignant, and they wanted to get sh to silence Peter. And they thought the only way they could do it in a proper way, because all the people that were following him, they would take him and put him in prison. But I want you to know that that um, that when you follow. Jesus. Jesus is always one step ahead of the crowd. They, 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 they took Peter and put him in jail, put, uh, sealed the, 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 the doors, and put guards on the outside of the jail to make sure that he stayed inside. And, and, and on that night, God dispatched an angel from heaven. The angel, the angel were able uh, to go through the locked door to bail Peter out without disturbing the guards on the outside. And when, and when, and when the Pharisees and the priests, they heard when they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they got up the next morning, Peter was in the temple preaching. He was in the temple. I thought we had him in jail. Well, I want you to know this how God works. You, you, can't, you can't stop God. You can't hinder God. You can't stop him. No power on earth can, can hinder him from doing what he does and what he does best. They went, they went to the temple. They decided again that, that they, would, they would ask Peter, I thought, I thought we had you in jail. How did you get out? While the committee had already gone down, the guards standing outside with their weapons, the door still sealed. They didn't understand how he got out. And my sisters and brothers, people don't understand your situation. They see you, but they don't know you. They don't know your story. They don't know how God has delivered you, brought you out, brought you through, and delivered you. And still they wonder, how did you do it? Well, there's no secret to what God can do, what God has done for others. He will do 
for you. Well, after, after, after they brought Peter, stood him up before the Sanhedrin, questioned him about how he got out, why he's still preaching when he told him not to preach. Why are you still teaching when we told you not to teach? Peter simply said, Well, men, I know that you all have your positions. I know you have your orders. You have your decrees. But we ought to obey God rather than man. Well, I want you to know the people got indignant. And they decided, well, we don't like a man like Peter to be talking or degrading us like this. So the Bible says that they decided to shut him up for good. They were going to kill him. They knew that he wouldn't preach anymore. But there's a well-known man in a city by the name of Gamaliel. He said, he said, he said to the crowd, don't, don't bother these men. L leave them alone. Because if their ministry is of God, if they are doing what God told them to do, I want you to know that there is no one of us present or absent that can overthrow what God has preordained. L leave him alone. And that's why, that's why, my sisters and brothers, we shouldn't, we shouldn't bother trying to correct situations in life that's really none of our business. Because if God is in the mix. If God is in the, in, the, in, the, in the, if God planned to fix it the way he's fixing it, nobody can destroy it. And that's why, that's why I, I, when, when we hear what's going on with many other state houses today with voting rights and privileges, we, we ought to be praying more than worrying about what they are doing. Because, see, God has a way of undoing what people do. He can fix it. He can do what no other power can do. He can make it so that they won't understand themselves what's going on. If God is in it, God will fix it. And I would encourage the men today to take a strong stand like Peter and others and make their stand as they made their stand. I want you to know that when we turn matters over into the hands of God, God, God will fight our battle for us and he will win our battle for us. That's why, that's why the scripture says, uh, uh, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can stop us? If God is for us, who can stand in our way? If God is for us, God will make a way for us, and he will provide for us. And that's why, that's why we have to make a declaration today, make it personal, and make a strong stand. And the best I can describe it is in the words of the song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow him. And I have no desire to turn back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. 
No one go with me. Sometimes family won't go because they don't understand. Friends won't go because they don't understand. Sometimes husband and wife won't go because they don't understand. But if nobody join you on the way, you decide to make Jesus your choice. Say, as the word says, and at last stand it, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world, the world behind me, and the cross before me. And I have no desire to do anything but to follow Jesus. Wherever he leads me, I will go. Wherever he tells me to stand, I will stand. Whatever he tells me to say, I will say it. I have decided to follow him. I have decided to stand with him. And when you stand with him, you're standing on a winning team. When you stand with him, you're standing with someone who knows the way, who knows how to make things happen in your life, to bring about situations that you cannot handle yourself. And I would encourage our men today to make that decision individually and collectively that we have decided to follow Jesus because of our suffering, our agony, our pain is really for him. And I do it with him because he's my indweller and he's my keeper and he's my sustainer. Say to those today who are even absent, listen to the message. You decide to make Jesus your choice. You're not going to have it easy always. You may be up today, but you can be down tomorrow. But no, no matter what plight you find yourself in, remember as long as Jesus is in your life, He's with you, and he have you covered. Stay with Jesus. He will stay with you. The door is just open. We have an invitation for Christian discipleship. For those who don't know him, for those who are seeking relief from your pain and struggle, those who are seeking relief from your suffering, he can help you today. He can help you out of your situation, put you on a path of healing, path of strength. Give him your life. Let him be your leader. Let him be your guide. I cannot offer to you a better friend than Jesus. I cannot offer to you a better companion than Jesus. I cannot offer to you a better person who understand your needs and your situation than Jesus. Try him today. Try him today. But let our Christian experience of camp baptism, the decision is yours. I have decided to follow Jesus. Turning. No turning back, no 
As was mentioned earlier, Sister Pearl Barnes has made her transition from this life to eternal life. Her son, Ronald, has decided to bring the body back to Milwaukee. He has contacted members of this congregation who are friends of Pearl Barnes to assist with the arrangements. And as soon as those arrangements are completed, um, we will send out um, um, the announcements as to the time uh, of the services uh, with the date. We have we have not um, we have not um, opened our facilities to accommodate funerals at this time, and um, so the funeral will perhaps be at the funeral home but we would render the same services that we would render here. And I, I, want, I want people to understand clearly that, that if, if, you, if you have prepared your life in this life to go and live with Jesus, it, it doesn't matter where your services is held. It's not gonna put you any closer to heaven if you have made preparation to be with Jesus. Um, uh, and and I'm, I'm for comfort, I'm for safety. Our numbers are going back up again for the coronavirus. And, um, and I'm doing my part as pastor to uh, make sure that we all uh, try to stay safe, do what we are supposed to do in order that um, we can keep our families safe. Um, uh, I told you we have, we have purchased equipment for this church, um, whereby when you're in here, you are, you are fully protected. Uh, but if you feel comfortable with your mask, you, you keep your mask on. Um, I, I know they are saying when you're in uh, service. We will only invite those persons uh, to service who have been vaccinated, and we want to um, keep that through the duration of this time um, because it's our endeavor uh, to do what we can do and what each is willing to do to keep our people safe. Now, I know there are those who are running around the country talking about, you know, they, they need more research. And, they, and, 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 and please don't listen to these folk because all the research that have been done, if they don't understand the research that have been done already, they, are they not going to understand any more that's going to be done. So if you, if you don't understand the elementary things, that's scripture. How are you going to understand the greater things? So um, uh, people who don't just have done well to get out of high school, and then they're going to tell you, you shouldn't be taking the shots. You shouldn't be vaccinated. The scientists don't know what they're talking about, and they haven't even taken a course in science. So I said, don't you listen to these folk. You listen to the folk who have had the training, people who know and people who have had the shots and are still living, and the people who are in the hospital who have not had the shots and, and, uh, and are dying today because they've been listening to these naysayers. I hadn't planned to say all this, but, but uh, I, I want to save as many of our people as we can. So if you don't have a medical condition where your doctors have said to you personally, uh, you should not take this right now. They're not going to tell you not to do it, but they tell you not to do it right now until they get you to a certain level, whatever your problems are. You listen to your doctor. But if you ain't been to no doctor, ain't got no doctor, only these naysayers in the streets, don't you listen to these folk? You'll be, you'll be, you'll be joining the silent community that has no voice, that's pushing up daisies, 
listen to those who know. Let us pray for our for the Barnes family. Uh, let us pray for those fam uh, uh, members who are helping Ronald to make those arrangements. Uh, uh, Ron, that is, to make those announcements, arrangements for the funeral. And let us, um, uh, and even with the funeral home, uh, uh, as many want to can visit, but they only have a limited number that can be in the service. So, um, um, so understand that. And, um, and we want to um, adhere to all the rules and regulations uh, while we are going through this period now. So let us pray for and with each other and work to keep each other safe. Um, you get your announcement done? Okay, all right. Oh God, our Father, we eternally grateful for the blessings of this day. I ask your continuous blessing on uh, those who are seeking guidance and directions for their lives. Pray for the men of this church, those who have committed themselves to follow your directions as well as your instructions. Empower them to move forward in your name. Fulfill their commission responsibilities. Enfold us in your love, grace, care, and tender mercies. Now may the love of God, the peace of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with each heart now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all the saints of God sing together. Amen. Let us stand and follow the direction of the ushers.